Hi and welcome to part two of my three-part series on how to take pictures of garden birds. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about the feeders and the perches, how to set them up to get the very best pictures. If you've watched video one in this series you know I've just recently updated my bird hide. If you haven't seen that video check the card up here and um, you can watch that video before carrying on with this one. But as part of that update of my setup what I've also done is change the way that I arrange my perches. I'm going to put on the screen now some examples of how I used to have my perches set up. The first setup I had I, I lasted a long while and gave me some very good photos but I came to realise that it was quite limiting because I couldn't move the perches around as well, I couldn't move the feeders around as well. I had this great big post of willow, huge thing, buried into the ground and then I had another piece coming off it that I attached the feeders to. But because it was buried into the ground, I had some issues where all of the feeders ended up being in the same place and all of the waste food dropped onto the floor. And you can see a patch just, just here where there was a lot of waste seed and I've, I've had to dig all that up and replace it with some topsoil. This new arrangement though looks a lot sparser but at the moment, it's a work in progress. And as part of this video, I'm gonna show you how I might go and find some new perches and add them to what I've got here to make the shots more interesting. So I'll start by talking you through the foods that I put out for the birds. Now, it's not normally set out like this. I've moved everything a little bit closer together just for the purposes of the video. But over here, I've got a, a feeding table. Now, at one point, it was quite a nice bird box but over time the bird box rotted and fell away. And so what I've done is on the top of here, I've put an old lid off a 50 litre box. And it, because it's made of plastic, it's never gonna rot. And it does a really good job. I just drill some holes in there just to um, let the water drain off. And it works brilliantly um, as a, a feeding table. I bought this metal stand to replace the willow that was in the ground because it gives me more flexibility. I can pick the stick up, move it around, plant it somewhere else, um, put it in different locations, and it'll also prevent build-up of um, bird waste and seed waste on the floor underneath it as well, so it'll give the ground time to repair. But on here, I've got lots of different kinds of food. I'll probably need to rejig the way that this is la um, laid out because I'm not sure it's in the best configuration at the moment, but over time I can work that out. The kinds of things I've got on here, I've got some sunflower hearts. Now, these are pretty much adored by all birds. Rather than getting the seed, the sunflowers that come in cases, the, the, the less waste and the birds just really love them. So they're very, very good. Then I've got um, Niger seed, um, particularly favourite of goldfinch or other finches, very popular. I've got fat balls um, there and note the squirrel proof cages, you get a lot of squirrels so that just stops them getting eaten by unwanted um, animals. I've got here some mealworms um, and then down on the floor, just under here, if I just lower this down, there we go, we've got a floor feeding, um, it's just another lid again, but the floor um, feeding um, station is just preferred by other birds. Certain birds like feeding off high tables, certain birds like feeding off the floor. So I get some pheasants that come into the, the garden and they like feeding off that one. The final spot that I put food are in these two trees here. This one is an old damson tree that's died, but it's still quite sturdy. Uh, and this is just a piece of log that rests against it. In the back of these, I've drilled holes. that I use a special tool that I've made. I'll show you this in a second. And I push through it into these holes. And this attracts things like woodpeckers, nuthatch, some of the other birds. Um, do go on to it as well but very recently I've seen a tree creeper and it's the first time I've seen one in the back garden and I've seen him three times over the last few days and they love just digging into these holes to get the suet. My suet pushing tool is just a really old screwdriver and I got the angle grinder and cut the end off 
So it was, I'd never used it as a screwdriver, but it's absolutely great to push um, the suet into the holes. What I used to use before that was a, a pen or a pencil and ended up breaking, but that has really, really been useful to just push that suet into those holes. The key to getting natural looking shots is to try and not take pictures of the birds on the feeders themselves. Some people like that. For me, I'd prefer to see them looking a little bit more natural. So here I've got a perch. It's just a bit of branch that I've stuck into the ground. And at virtually the same height, just here, is a perch. So what happens is the birds come out of the bushes just here, land on the, the perch here, and then jump across. And so what the key is to try and capture the bird as they're sitting on the perch just before they jump across to the feeder. It gives a much more natural look. But of course, you can change all of these. You can pull the twig out of the ground, replace it with another one, and change the look of your photographs. Another tip for creating perches are these quite useful um, board hooks that I found in our local garden center. Uh, they're about a meter tall. They've got hooks on the end. They're only about six quid each. Um, but you obviously can pick these up, stick them anywhere you want. But because they've got hooks on the end, they're designed really for feeders, but they're great. If you've got a branch, you can um, stick that on and it'll hold itself um, in that position. Or you can use some kind of clamp just to, um, let me go attach that on to make it more secure. Bit of gaffer tape, bit of Velcro, anything like that would work. And we've got a really steady perch here and we can put that, that end right next to the feeder. So we've got a great solid perch that the birds will just land on, on the way to the feeder. One thing I've spotted is one of our old gates that was about to be chopped up for firewood. But looking at the top, the, the end post is really gnarled, would make a nice um, perch. And the top bar has also got some really interesting moss and crackly bits on it. So I'm not going to bore you with me chopping this up and putting it on a stand. But in a later video, you'll probably see the end result of how this is going to be turned into a perch as well. I'm fortunate to live quite close to some open woodland and so I've had a little walk down and I'm going to have a scout around to see if I can find any fallen trees that I might be able to use as a perch. Clearly I'm not going to take anything that's living but if there's anything lying on the ground it might have some moss on it, it might be useful that I can use back at the bird hide. I found what I was looking for in the wood, but unfortunately the battery died, so you couldn't see me trying to lug this all the way back. There's a lot more weight in it than I realised, so I've had to come back and made myself a brew. But it's given me the chance to show you what it's like with a little bit more breath. So this kind of thing, um, it's got two really good ends, this end and this end, um, that I can put into the ground and it can look like an old tree that's fallen over. I'll show you a shot of something similar that I used in a previous shoot. But this will make quite a good perch um, for some of the bigger birds. Hope you've enjoyed part two. Um, if you've got any questions about anything I've mentioned, drop them below in the comments and I'll get back to you. Part three is going to be some tips about how to actually take pictures of birds. So hope you'll join me there in part three and I'll see you soon. <music>